In this Stories from the Strong Room, we look back at Stone Ferry, revealing the past and character of this largely forgotten, but once fascinating hamlet. Today, Stone Ferry has been swallowed up by the city of Hull. Its once rural nature has now given way to urbanisation, a mixture of housing and industry. However, for much of its history, the hamlet of Stone Ferry had been very much rural. Up until the 1960s, the view looking north would have been one of open fields. The view today is now that of Sutton Fields Industrial Estate, while beyond lies the Branzome Estate. To its east lies the estates of Longhill and Bilton Grange, while to its west, the North Hull Estate. The hamlet of Stone Ferry originally formed a part of the parish of Warne, but later became a part of the parish of Sutton-on-Hull, of which it was closely connected to over the following centuries. The hamlet centred on its northern edge, close to the Leeds Road area. Stone Ferry takes its name from the river crossing, which was recorded as early as 1269, replacing the earlier Stone Ford crossing. However, it wasn't until the 14th century that the name Stone Ferry began to be used. Before road improvements during the 18th century, an early track ran from Stone Ferry to Hull, taking the direct route close to the River Hull. Residents of Stone Ferry preferred the route to the early town of Hull via Hull Road, now Ings Road. The route possibly developed with a Holdness Road in the 13th century. The route to Hull would have taken in Leeds Road, which takes its name from a medieval dyke or ditch, the Ledder, that ran its length before joining Tween Dykes and Ings Road, before eventually linking up with Holdness Road. This route was probably favourable to that of the more direct route via the River Hull Corridor, which was liable to regular flooding. An older track running from Sutton skirted Stone Ferry's eastern edge. Known as Sutton Trod, a part of this 11th century track is still in existence, running from Chamberlain Street in Sutton Village to Sutton Road. It appears Sutton Trod continued through what is the housing estate between Hathersidge and Bearbridge Road before cutting through Rockford Fields and across the old Reckitt Sports Ground, joining what later became the Fordyke Stream at the bottom of Woodall Street. From here the old track appears to have followed the line of Woodall Street to Stone Ferry, its final destination being that of Drypool. Stone Ferry, like much of the immediate area, was at constant risk of flooding. In 1646, a storm struck, which broke the dry pool banks, resulting in Stone Ferry and a large swathe of the area being underwater for almost half a year. Stone Ferry had no church of its own until the 19th century. Being prone to flooding, it wasn't uncommon for children to be baptised at dry pool rather than at Sutton due to Stone Ferry often being cut off from the parish church at Sutton. A name that once had a close association with Stone Ferry was that of Lopholm, a hamlet in the 15th century on the northwestern edge of Stone Ferry. Any reference to its existence ceased when the fields of the West Car were developed. Some reminiscence of Lopholm survived into the early 20th century with three fields that once bore the name Lopham, presumably in reference to the old hamlet. Copenhagen Road, now part of the Sutton Fields Industrial Estate, occupies part of the former Lopholm site. In the 18th century, Stone Ferry was one of the benefactors in the will of Anne Watson. The former home of Anne Watson, on what was then Hospital Lane, now on Watson Street, was known as the White House. This was given over on her death to be used as a hospital and school. The White House underwent various alterations and rebuilding, particularly in the 19th century before all remnants of the property were lost sometime in the early years of the 20th century. The first bridge across the River Hull at Stone Ferry was proposed in the 18th century. Concerns, however, were raised as to it blocking the navigable River Hull upstream to Beverley and beyond. As a result, the first bridge at Stone Ferry wasn't built until 1905. To allow for river traffic, the bridge was a swing style. The bridge remained in operation until the late 1980s when the bridge was replaced by a dual lifting bridge we see today built between 1988 and 1991. Still very much rural and separate from the growing town of Hull that lay to its south, by the 19th century, a small number of industries had developed around the River Hull at Stone Ferry. What industry existed included a malt kiln, whiting and oil mills. 
However, it was the second half of the 19th century that saw a rapid development in stone ferries industry, and with it, its subsequent development and urbanisation. In 1884, Hull-based company Ricketts and Sons established a factory at Morley Street to manufacture synthetic ultramarine, a deep blue colour pigment. In 1882, Stone Ferry was absorbed into the borough of Kingston upon Hull. In 1912, the Isis oil mill, which is still visible today, was built. Stone Ferry was very much the centre of oil seed milling. Along with the Isis oil mill, the British extracting works had a site in Stone Ferry, along with British oil and cake mills, together with several smaller companies employed in the industry. By the early 20th century, Stone Ferry was very much on its way to being industrial and urbanised. Hull's tallest structure is located opposite Stone Ferry, on the west bank of the River Hull. Better known as Wreckage Chimney, this 141 metre chimney was built in the early 1970s and used to discharge sulphur dioxide into the atmosphere. Today the chimney is all but obsolete but still towers high above Hull's skyline. Late Victorian housing fronting the north side of Leeds Road dates from around 1890, while on the south side the houses date to around the beginning of the 20th century. Properties were built in Maxwell and Morley Street, close to Woodall Street. These late Victorian houses were built by 1890, most likely for those employed in the nearby industries. All these properties have long since disappeared, with the exception of two, a former takeaway and a newsagent's. Tomlinson's farm, now a builder's merchant, remained well into the 20th century. Stone Ferry was once connected to the railway. A short branch line off the Hull Hornsey Railway was built around 1913, which connected to a goods station at Stone Ferry. The line closed in the 1970s and was taken up shortly after. The former branch line is now a popular route among dog walkers. The former Hull, Barnsley and West Riding Railway runs through Stone Ferry via the overhead rail bridge by Woodall Street. Today, it operates as a good line to Alexandra and King George Docks. As Hull's population exploded in the 19th century, there was a need to meet the growing demand for water. Spared on by the 1849 cholera outbreak, sources for a better water supply were sought. It was suggested that water should be taken from the River Hull at its ebb, deemed sufficient to render fresh water. In 1845, a waterworks was constructed at Stone Ferry on the river's west bank. However, there were complaints of poor water quality and by 1910, the waterworks was in disuse. As industry increased, properties continued to be built to meet the growing demand for workers. Properties on Lorraine Street were first built around the turn of the 20th centuries, and this continued into the 1920s. Chamberlain Road was laid out in the interwar period, while Woodall Street's first properties were built around the same time. The earliest properties on Woodall Street were those built at its top end by its junction with Stone Ferry Road on Kirkstead Avenue, and may have been built around the same time as those on Maxwell and Morley Street. At the end of Woodall Street, ran the Fordyke Stream or Drain. A handful of Victorian houses were once adjacent to the Fordyke Stream, though these have long since disappeared. The Fordyke Stream has since been filled in and now forms a part of the cycle track running from Brandsholm to Spivey Street. The area of Stone Ferry by the Fordyke Stream was once known as Thistleton, though the name has long since fallen out of use. Close by is perhaps Stone Ferry's oldest domestic building. Known to locals as the Paddocks, this building appears to date from the mid 19th century, and if not the same property, an earlier property once stood on the same site. It probably formed a part of a farm. Sadly, it is now earmarked for demolition. With its industry, Stone Ferry was a target for German bombers during the Second World War. As a result, Stone Ferry was hit on a number of raids. Stone Ferry Bridge was almost hit on at least two occasions, but the bombs either missed or never exploded. However, Kathleen Road was hit during a raid in July 1941. To meet the need of Stone Ferry's increasing parishioners, several churches were built. The first being the Bethel Wesleyan Chapel, which was incorporated into the school at Stone Ferry. 
A church by Maxwell Street was built to serve this part of the Stone Ferry's inhabitants. It was demolished around the same time as those properties on Maxwell and Morley Street were demolished. One of the last churches to be demolished in Stone Ferry was St John's Wesleyan in 1986. The site is now occupied by Revo Court. Today there is only one public house in Stone Ferry, the Ship Inn on Anne Watson Street. There were however a number of public houses over the centuries. In the mid 19th century there were three possibly four public houses or inns in Stone Ferry. The Blue Ball was on the west side of the river and was demolished around the same time the new bridge was built in 1905. The Grapes or Ferry House on Ferry Lane was replaced around the same time as the construction of the new bridge in 1905. The Sloop or Ship Inn close to the present Ship Inn may have been linked to an earlier ferry crossing just north of the present bridges. It is possible that this public house predated all the public houses in Stone Ferry with its earliest reference in 1719. Another public house now lost was the New Inn. Located on Leeds Road, it was demolished in the 1970s to make way for improvements to the road, mainly the new roundabout at the junction of Stone Ferry and Leeds Road. Today, Stone Ferry retains much of its industrial heritage. The once quiet Stone Ferry Road is now one of Hull's major arterial routes with thousands of vehicles using it daily. Retail units have sprung up over the last 25 years, yet for thousands of Hull's residents, Stone Ferry is their home. We hope you found this talk interesting and informative. If you would like to discover more about Stone Ferry or indeed any other aspect about Hull's past, why not visit the Hull History Centre or indeed our website www.hullhistorycentre.org.uk